Good to see you again, Pauls. So today we are going to discuss a very special topic. We are going to explain that the Kolmogorov forward equation and the Kolmogorov backward equation form an adjoint system. What it means is that the linear differential operators associated with the forward and the backward equations are adjoints of each other. If the term adjoint sounds too technical, then you can think of it as just a generalization of the transpose. Remember, transpose of a matrix is different than the matrix of cofactors that you would have seen when learning about determinants. What they call adjoint is the classical adjoint. So here, the adjoint is meant more in the sense of a transpose, but it's a general term. Now, instead of building up from the Brownian, Let's start with the process described by general SDE. So we are going all in and you can get the familiar Brownian, geometric Brownian and onstein hollenbeck processes by just changing the drift and diffusion coefficients of this SDE. So one derivation is going to cover a range of processes and this is what we like these days. Now we know the Kolmogorov forward equation. And if you are from physics, then you would know this equation as the Fokker-Planck equation. We have derived this equation in a previous video, but it essentially means that the rate of change of probability density with respect to time, this is the term on the left hand side, can be described by the differential operator, which is the expression on the right hand side of the equality. And it's easier when written in the operator form. Notice we have dropped time dependence of the parameters. We don't want any of that. So this is another way of specifying the probability density of a process. But this approach is more general in the sense that analytical formulae for probability densities are available for only a handful of cases. But you can write as many differential equations as you like, right? We also know the Kolmogorov backward equation. It's very similar. And the difference is easy to see when you extract the differential operator from the right hand side. Conceptually, what these equations represent are the infinitesimal changes in the conditional probability densities, this forward and backward respectively. So if you have a conditional probability density, which describes the probability density of the process going from x0 at time 0 to x at time t, then the forward equation describes the dynamics of the probability density in terms of the forward variables, this x and t, and the backward equation describes the dynamics in terms of the backward variables, x0 and t0. So for clarity, one can write p in terms of the four variables, and then the forward equation in terms of x and t, treating initial values x0 and t0 as constant, and the backward equation in terms of x0 and t0, treating x and t as constants. But once you understand the meaning of the equations, then nothing is lost if you use the same variable names in both equations. It makes the presentation much clearer. With the equations and their operators meaning understood, let's demystify the term adjoint. So let's bring back the memories from the first year algebra course. Let's say we have a vector of three elements and another vector of three elements. So to calculate the dot product, you multiply the corresponding elements and then add the pieces together. The equivalent of this dot product in more general setting is the inner product, which for the simple case represents the same thing as the dot product as you can easily check. Transpose of a column vector makes it a row vector and now just apply the matrix multiplication row times column, so you will get the sum of the product of the corresponding entries. Now the vector space can be more general. For example, instead of the space of three elements vectors here, we can have a vector space of continuous function over an interval. The inner product on this space can be defined in a similar way, so you multiply the two functions and then integrate over the interval. Remember, integral is the continuous time analog of summation. So the innocent concept of vector space and inner product can take you quite far if you are willing to play along. Now let's recall the definition of a linear operator. Don't worry about the term operator. It's just the transformation from vector space to itself. The focus is on linearity. You can call it linear transformation if you like. 
and all it says is a linear transformation preserves the addition and multiplication by a scalar. For a simple example, let's say we have a vector of three elements as before and assume a transformation f just rearranges the elements so a vector of x1, x2 and x3 becomes a vector of x3, x1 and x2. Think of a point in 3D and try to visualize how this transformation will transform the point. Now in such a finite dimensional space, one can represent this linear transformation in terms of a matrix. And this simple example, we can take A as the matrix of zeros and ones, where the zeros and ones are placed so that the multiplication of a vector by this matrix will produce the desired transformation. As you can easily verify, multiplying the vector and the argument of the transformation by the A produces the output of the transformation. Now this is a simple example. For slightly more complicated examples, you can have the vector space of polynomials and the derivatives or integral as the linear operators. And instead of a finite dimension space, you can have an infinite dimensional space. So instead of three elements, you can have a continuum of elements such as the space of continuous function over an interval. So you can see now that our Kolmogorov forward differential operator is the same thing as a linear transformation. And summary then, we can say that multiplying a vector by matrix A, transform it into another vector. And here we are talking about transformations to a vector in the same space. The linear operator is usually meant in this sense. It transforms an element of a space to another element of the same space. And similarly, applying our linear differential operator to a function produces an other function. By the way, remember the Kolmogorov equations work on probability density and as such we assume these functions have complex support. Essentially, these functions vanish outside an interval. Think of the compact support as saying that the probability of a particle moving an extremely large distance over an infinitesimal period is zero. Here, we also assume that the functions are continuously differentiable over the interval and the derivatives also have compact support, so they vanish at both ends. Now, we just need to put these concepts together and we will know what an adjoint is and in what way does the system of Kolmogorov equation form an adjoint system. Now that AU produces another vector, let's calculate the inner product of this vector and the vector V. So we just replace U with AU. Now the transpose of AU is equal to the transpose of U times transpose of A, again first year algebra. Now let's change the order of multiplication. And now we can just invert this, meaning write this in terms of the inner product. So you can see the inner product of AU and V is equal to the inner product of U and A transpose V. So we can deduce that we will get a similar relationship in the infinite dimensional case. However, the transpose becomes the adjoint, which is usually represented with asterisk as opposed to T. And we know the inner product is now given by the integral over the interval as opposed to the dot product. Let's proceed to demonstrate this is indeed the case. Let's reproduce the operator of the forward equation. We could have equally started with the backward equation by the way, so the choice doesn't make a difference. Now if we apply this operator to the function g, we will get Substituting this expression inside the integral, we get. Now integral is a linear operator, so we can replace the integral of sum by the sum of integrals and take the scalar constant out of the integral, so we get. So we have been using the linear operator all along without knowing it, but it's coming together nicely as you can see. Now we just use the integration by parts, which is as follows. And if the product u and v vanishes at both ends, which is the case here for our functions f and g, they have compact support, right? So they vanish at both ends. So this becomes, so applying the integration by parts just changes the sign and swaps the derivative and the non-derivative terms. 
So UdV becomes VdU. So we can read the results of applying the integration by parts to the first term. Notice we change the sign in the position of the derivative. We apply the integration by parts to the second term twice because we have the second partial derivative inside the integral right, but there's no problem. First application of the integration by part produces a minus sign, which becomes positive when we apply the integration by parts again. And the only other change is the derivative operator goes from the term sigma squared times g to f. Now we can combine the terms inside one integral, factoring out g. So we are applying the property of the linear operator in reverse order. Now we recognize the term in brackets as the operator of the backward equation, so we can replace it by L. And we can write this in terms of inner product. So we can see that the backward operator is the adjoint of the forward operator, which we reproduce here. So this is what they mean when they say the forward and backward equations form an adjoint system. Now to build a better conceptual understanding of this relationship, let's slightly simplify the process. We keep the continuous time, but reduce the space dimension to a finite set. So now we have a finite number of states, and the process will be described by transition probabilities between states. So you can see an element of this matrix, say ij, represents the probability density of the process going from state i to state j over the time interval t. Notice we are assuming the process is homogeneous over time. And continuous time, the role of the transition matrix is played by the generator. So this matrix represents the infinitesimal transition rates among states. With the details hidden in the matrices, the Kolmogorov forward equation takes a simple form. And we know from matrix multiplication rules that a generic element of the product of the matrices on the right hand side, say entry in the ith row and jth column, will be the sum of the product of the elements in the ith row of P and jth column of G. Essentially, the probability of going from state I to K and then state K to J sum over all the states K and this represents the derivative with respect to time. So this formula describes the rate of change of probability density over an infinitesimal period. The Kolmogorov backward equation becomes, and you can easily deduce the formula for a generic element, say element i and j. So it is kind of transpose or adjoint of the previous equation. So the system is conceptually quite simple. Now you can read how the adjoint system will look like for the standard Brownian motion, geometric Brownian and onstand Hullenbeck processes. You just change the drift and diffusion coefficients, right? For example, for the Brownian, the drift will be zero and the diffusion coefficient will be equal to one divided by two. Maybe you can repeat the derivation of the adjoint for one of these, starting with the backward equation. So we hope you enjoyed the video and we look forward to seeing you in the next.